Hi everyone, let's take a look at the following example. If vector A and vector B are unit vectors that make an angle of 60 degrees with each other, calculate the magnitude of 3 times vector A minus 4 times vector B. Step number one, draw a diagram. There are two vectors. One of them is going to be vector A, and the second vector is going to be vector B. And again, be mindful that in the given, these are not any vector, but they're unit vectors. This means the magnitude is going to be exactly one. So when I label this, not only am I writing vector A, but I'm even showing that the magnitude of each vector is going to be one. Now, be mindful that the angle between them is 60 degrees. And the key here is, and I'll use a different color for you, always connect the vectors tail to tail when it comes to measuring the angle, angle theta, in between them. Step number two, draw a second diagram that's going to represent the magnitude of 3 times vector A minus 4 times vector B. So in this case, we're not looking at vector A, but 3 times vector A. So roughly speaking, it's going to look something like that. When you think about the second vector, which is going to be 4 times vector B, now the key is this. You're taking 3A minus 4B, not 3A plus 4B, which would be something like that. So again, let's kind of show you the opposite of this. Because we're looking for negative 4B, it's going to look, roughly speaking, something like that. Now let's go back and label this. If you think about the first case, again, 3 times vector A in terms of its magnitude, it's going to be 3. Again, how do we know that? Because it's a unit vector. A unit vector is a magnitude of 1. 3 times 1 is going to be 3. Now, I'm going to make a mistake here, and this is something that I would like you to think about. If the question was adding 4 times vector B, then we would write down the magnitude of vector B times 4, or 4 times vector B, it's going to be 4. Now, this is the mistake that I see all the time. So we're going to show you what not to do, then we'll talk about what to do. You think about the magnitude of negative 4 times vector B, very often one person, one student, is going to write down negative 4. And this is not how you do it. This is not how you do it, unfortunately. Remember, magnitude means find the length. Length, of course, it's always positive. That's how you do it. So again, if you want to become the best, not only should you know what to do, but think about what not to do. And now you know everything. Now, I'm going to use a slightly different color. I want to show you the resultant vector. So again, we're looking at this vector in green. And this is going to be 3 times vector A minus 4 times vector B. And we're looking for the magnitude. So again, we don't need to know the direction. We just need to know the magnitude. Now, if you go back and you look at the angle between these two vectors, we knew from the given that the angle between them was 60 degrees. So if you think about this, this angle would have been 180 minus 60, which is 120 degrees. Again, just in case you're not connected, I want to make sure nobody is left behind. So this vector here is basically this vector here, which came from this vector. So we know if this is going to be 60, then this angle would be 180 minus 60, which would be 120. Now, because this is a straight line right here, a straight line, of course, is going to be 180 degrees. 180 minus 120 is going to be 60 degrees, just like that. So we're going to calculate the magnitude by applying the cosine law. Let's go back to the other color for you. So again, in case you forgot the cosine law, c squared equals to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. And again, make sure your calculator is turned on, you press clear, and you're in degree mode. So in this case, when I think about the magnitude of 3a minus 4b, this basically is going to be the square root of 
3 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 times 3 times 4 cosine 60 degrees. Now, are you ready? You and I, one team with one goal. We're going to leave the final answer in both exact form and to one decimal place. So, I'm taking my calculator. I turn it on, I press clear, I confirm, I am in degree mode, and I'm going to press 3 square plus 4 square minus 2 times 3 times 4 times cosine of 60, and that's going to be exactly the square root of 13. If I rounded the answer to one decimal place, that's going to be approximately 3.6 units. So again, we have the answer in both exact form and rounded to one decimal place. I hope this makes sense.